Hello again, everybody. This is Dan Clouser, and welcome back to the Journey of My Mother's Son podcast. This is episode number 99, so I wanted to do a little uh, kind of series leading up to 100, um, and starting the next 100 podcast. So I asked Sandy to join me on this podcast. Honey, thanks for joining me. I know you love being on the, on the podcast with me, so thanks. You're welcome, and I'm glad to be on the journey with you. Yes, this episode 99, so I wanted Sandy and I to talk a little bit and reflect back on our journey. And then episode 100 will be with our dear friend Tony Reese, who was my original producer of my Stepping Up to the Plate podcast and uh, started this off on this journey of podcasting, got me into podcasting, so I thought it was appropriate to have her on episode 100. And then episode 101 is going to be a compilation of a lot of the answers to my final question. Um, So uh, I think that'll be kind of interesting to start off the second 100 episodes. So uh, so yeah, I just wanted to sit down and talk with my wife. Um, We're sitting here in North Georgia, in LJ, Georgia. Beautiful countryside yeah we're staring at mountains right now Um, absolutely beautiful resort that we're in Uh, Talona Ridge RV resort brand new just built I recommend it to anyone yep just built in November I was able to do a outdoor mountainside yeah I mean it's incredible just incredible views everywhere we turn our heads right now you see nothing but beautiful mountains and I was able to do a podcast with one of the owners um, Wes Henderson, which will be coming up here in a couple episodes as well. So that'll be one you'll definitely want to tune into. Um, But they've got everything you can imagine here. Um, Friday and Saturday nights, live music. And not just like some jabroni off the street. I mean, we got to see two really talented, well, three, because one was a duo. It was a duo, right. Um, But incredibly talented artists uh, we got to see. They've got Three a little hours worth too. Yeah, yeah, six thirty to nine thirty. And they serve for purchasing beer and wine, and some like little appetizers, a couple little appetizers. Yeah, we got the uh, pimento cheese dip the one night, which was delicious. Um, and the wines that they sell there are all local. And uh, they got a pool and a hot tub here. Um, which we finally got to partake of today. This is Easter Sunday when we're recording this. Um, the pool was a little on the cold side. They're having some issues with the, the shutoff um, where someone can very easily accidentally shut off the pool heater so it doesn't keep it to <laughs> be 80 degrees desired. But it was nice. It was nice and refreshing. I mean, today's been a beautiful day so far, a beautiful Easter. Um, Peaceful. We got up and watched the sunrise, which was amazing. We saw the full moon behind us and the sunrise in front of us, which was cool. Um, We've been able to walk Uke a lot. We were the first people to try the dog wash that they offer free here. Um, That's right. They have have two dog runs. That are fenced in. One's small for small dogs. One's for a larger dog. Um, I think there was something else that we tried. We tried something else too, and for the first time, oh, they have pavilions that have gas grills, and it's awesome. You just take your food over, turn the gas on, and stand there and wait until and get it cooked. Yeah, and there, I know a lot of people have the heebie-jeebies about using public grills. Um, they have the cleaner there. They yep. have the brush. You have to clean. I cleaned it before and after because they at least tell you to clean it after you're done using it. Um, they have washers and dryers sporadically in the campground or resort. I wouldn't even consider. This is more a resort type thing. And yeah. They plan on, they have pickleball they're installing. Trying to think, they have a trail. It's still not fully. It's not paved, so I don't know when that will be done, 
And there's three phases to this, right? Am I correct, Dan? Yep. Three phases here. Two of them are complete and ready to occupy. The third one, I think the target date, if I remember correctly, is mid-June. Um, but you can tell, I mean, we're looking out over it, and it's it's uh, it's close. It's, it is. Um, and since we've been here, which was, oh my goodness, what day? I've lost track. Thursday? Wednesday. Wednesday. We got here Wednesday. The trees were bare with no leaves, and it's unbelievable now. <laughs> they were just blossoming and yeah. blooming, and it's just a gorgeous sight. Yeah, it really is. And um, one of my old players... Zach Schneider came up to visit us yesterday, so we got to go into the little town of L.J., Georgia. Um, just drove through the town, but it looked like a very cool, quaint little town with a lot of shops and a lot of things to do. He taught um, us a couple things when yeah, we got here. We, He's like, he asked us, "Do you like to? Do you like a meat and two choice and a meat and two, two or a meat and three? Or, yes. And I looked at him like thinking he meant. At meat meaning M E E T instead of M E A T. You guys know meat as M E M E A T and two side two mean or three meaning the sides. So that he taught us, and he also asked if we ever have tried the boiled peanuts down here, and we're like, no, we don't. I don't know. Something doesn't appeal with them. So we found a, a old gentleman that on the side of the road that was boiling them and selling them along with some local honey and we stopped and we tried them and we actually liked them and we find out there's a lot of health benefits to them yeah they're they're surprisingly good it's um, like a soft uh, bean like yeah once once you understand that you're not biting into a hard peanut like mm -hmm. a normal roasted peanut and you kind of get past that that it's more of a bean texture because it was boiled um, they're very good. And you get salted and Cajun. I don't know if they had unsalted. And they had lightly salted. Light, okay. Yeah. Lightly yeah. yeah. And, and we stopped at an orchard. Orchard. Yeah, that was nice. Got uh, some fried pies. Yes, I never, they had fried, they have fried pies certain areas in Pennsylvania, but uh, we never had them, so this was our first to try it here. So I had a strawberry cream this morning, and I have another one in the fridge for later to heat up. Would be an apricot. Dan, I don't know what. I had apple this morning, and then I will have strawberry. Not strawberry cream, just regular no. strawberry apple, this afternoon. Apple, strawberry, and I forget the other. There was three of them that are the high, high popular purchasing ones. But they had probably they had 15 at least a dozen. different yeah. flavors, if not more. Um, they also had apples, produce, some produce and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, so this has been a lot of fun. And, uh, I mean, from here we go up to Kentucky. And yes. we'll be in Kentucky for about a week at various locations. I look forward to that. Um, going to the Life, uh, ARC experience. A life size ARC, am I I'm correct? Yeah. Yep. Um, and tour that. Going to the Creation Museum, going to the Louisville Slugger Museum. And then we had to get baseball in there somewhere. We had to. <laughs> dear hubby. We had to. And then... Uh, Harvest Toast. No, we're going to Battlefield to Harvest Toast again. And Fredericksburg, once we oh, head back over to Fredericksburg, right. Virginia, yeah. We have so we'll uh, hit Mammoth Cave. Mammoth Cave National and Park, and then... Big Bone Lick. Historical State Park. State Park, which is all in, I think, in the Virginia, Kentucky, Kentucky. area. So, yeah. Just yeah. And then we'll head over to Lake Anna State Park in Virginia. And then that's after that is when we hit the uh, Battlefield Country Store Harvest yeah. Host that we loved, that we went to back on Veterans Day of 2020. We cannot eat as much as we did then. Yeah. It was just, you know, there, everything you can actually share the portions that they give you there. Uh, why share when you can eat it all yourself? Nah, I think I'll share because I don't like feeling extra full. <laughs> all right, we may have to find somebody else to share with. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just wrap it up for another day. and It's never the same, but um, anyway. I don't know if they're having any bacon giveaways that day, so oh, we probably, no. won't, probably won't win 10 pounds of bacon like no, we did. No, probably not. That day, but... Uh, That's okay. 
and hopefully we'll uh, we'll see our friends Homa and Andrew Schweers and um, after that we'll go into Maryland in the Aberdeen area and stay at Bar Harbor RV Resort Marina for uh, five days before getting back to Pennsylvania for Mother's Day. Yes. And we know the kids are waiting anxiously for us to arrive. First time that we'll be back in Pennsylvania since July, End of July. July 31st. Right. Um, so, been gone for a while. So looking forward to seeing family. But, um, so on this little stretch, honey, I mean, we did a lot. We did. We volunteered yes. four different it's always projects, 4.1 different projects. Meeting new other volunteers and sharing experiences. And what's, uh, what's your favorite part of our year to volunteer experience? Hmm. I mean, just, well, just to give back. I, it's such a, a good feeling when you know how much these people that, like at state parks and stuff, that need extra help, extra hands to get things back for people to come in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you got a lot of budget cuts and staffing issues, so a lot of the routine maintenance and stuff like that um, can't always get addressed in a timely fashion. Um, little projects get put off. So they're incredibly grateful when they have a, a group of, like, you know, whether it was 10 like Roan Mountain or 30 like Picasso or 50, 50. <laughs> like um, Sam Houston Jones. Right. And it, it's, I don't know, it's not, it's that plus more, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to put it into words, the experience, because the people you're working for are incredible. The people you're working with are incredible. And, uh, you know, obviously Phil and Char just mm -hmm. make it an amazing experience. Definitely. All the way around. I love those guys. So, um, so yeah, I mean, is there anything since we left on this leg, since we left Pennsylvania on this leg in July, that really stands out. I mean, like I said, we did so much. I mean, the 9-11 yeah. Memorial, we went to Kent State, and know, Rock and Roll day, Hall I mean, of Fame. I mean, just I so much stuff. I mentioned so much. I think as far as the Teddy Roosevelt Park was so rewarding to see the colors, the the buttes were they i think those were buttes yeah um and the wildlife that exists in them places just everything I, yeah. I i can't even pinpoint because there's so much beauty out here and you don't know until you get out of yeah. your your state surroundings or your city surroundings or where you grew up or lived or whatever yeah, I mean, even like this, I, mean, I had no idea no. that North Georgia was... And I think those are the Blue Mountains, terrible. over, or the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains, all the way out. Yeah, Appalachian, and Blue I forget Ridge. the actual, um, Wes had explained what ridges were rich, which, um, the one day we were talking, but I have no recollection of right. any of the ones that he said. And we um, learned, it's not even, not just a view, we have learned so many new things like like I said, the buttes. We didn't know they were what well, we thought they'd be a mount. It was a mountain, and it was a butte. You know, <laughs> just little things like that. There's a uh, there's a hawk flying in the distance right now, very calmly gliding through the air, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's uh, so it's hard to put into words everything we've experienced. Um, as we're slowly approaching two years of full-time travel. Um, yeah, I mean, the people, the places, uh, the experiences, you just can't, can't really appropriately put it into words um, as to what yeah. it, you know, 
what it does, what it does for your soul. Um, so, uh, yeah, but I'm grateful that we have a, a beautiful Easter day. I know there's rain moving in this afternoon, um, but, uh, yeah, but most part we did a, we did a lot this morning knowing that. Yeah. Yeah. We got up early, walked early, walked a little over three miles. Um, actually walked off of the grounds for a little bit. Um, some of the side roads here. Check those out. So we were uh, able to take advantage of the the early nice weather, knowing that that uh, not so great weather is moving in. So um, yes, yeah, so it's been it's been an interesting journey mm -hmm. so far. I mean, when we started this back in August of 2020, honey. Um, I mean, did you ever think that it would be no like this? No, I did not. So you're glad I talked you into yes, it? Yes, I am. Right, so that's <laughs> yes. on record now? Yes. Dan I mean, was right? As much as I will always, I miss not being able to make things or bake things like I used to. Um, or my homemade peanut butter and coconut eggs, you I know. I miss those. Um, I seem to somehow, like the last couple days, the couple days ago, I somehow mastered lasagna, which I never did before. So very good. In a small oven, I did it. So that was our I Easter just, dinner. That's actually how I have to act, um, try to learn to experiment more with different meals, and I have, but it's hard when you have a smaller setup area and oven. Yeah, you've been pretty good at adapting. Yes. No doubt. And uh, my wife does a fantastic job of knowing that when when we're going to be in a spot, because we don't tow a vehicle, um, so when we're going to be in a spot for a couple weeks, um, she does a great job at planning out our our meals and knowing what we need so that we never are in a, in a pinch and, and can't get to a place to get something so yeah. and um, I also I always keep instant milk I know it's not the best but we keep it in case we need it for cereal or some kind of backup I don't have it it's not pre made like made already it's just it's in the cupboard you know yeah <laughs> um, Dan I want to back up because I want to know what you're what you have liked so far did you have a favorite or not since we left I mean, it's always so tough to nail down one favorite. Um, I mean, I think for me, it's always going to be the people. Um, you know, being able to spend time with Dustin and Isaac in Arizona. Um, you know, getting to see Justin in April in Idaho. Um, Ron in Washington. Uh, again, every time we do a volunteer project. You know, everybody we get to spend time with there. Um, you know, back in Florida with, uh, you know, the family, cousins and aunts and uncles. Um, you know, seeing Lori and Jenny in Louisiana, getting to the Dream Center. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's really impossible. As much as I try, it's, it's always it's impossible, impossible yeah. to, to name a favorite because they are all such special, incredible moments. I mean... Zach coming up here, you know, driving an hour and a half from Atlanta to come up and visit us. Um, I mean, that meant so much to me because, you know, a lot of times people don't come to see us. We have to go I to see, see them, you know. So that that meant more than he'll ever know that that uh, he took the time to make that drive and and uh, spend a couple hours with us. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, it's just the people, you know. I mean, even like the the peanut guy yesterday oh, yeah. you know i mean Here's just a yes. you know short five seven minute it's interaction so you know um i told you know when he was getting the peanuts out of the whatever the you know the cross pot the big pot whatever yeah whatever it was <laughs> where the where they were in the water you know i'm like wait i want to take a picture of that because it's my first time with <laughs> with boiled <laughs> peanuts you know and he just took it all in stride and played along and and uh 
yeah, I mean, so, you know, stuff like that. I mean, just the, the random people that we've, we've met and we've just had, you know, little interactions with. I mean, even, you know, last night after the, the music, um, talking to the rest of Wes's family, you know, again, not really planned. It, it just kind of, you know, came up. So talking to his parents and, you know, again, being able to understand the vision here um, and everything they're doing. Um, so it's always going to be about the people, the people and the connections for me. Um, I know, and every chance you get, you'll do a podcast with someone that just intrigues your interest. Yeah, yeah, and that, that was part of what this was going to be about, to tell tell those stories. I, I still think everybody's got a story to tell, and I think it's, it's always, you know, interesting to... Uh, you know, when we talk to other full-timers, what made them start, you know, what keeps them going, um, you know, like Mike and Ginny not being full-time, you know, why they chose to stay in a, you know, sticks and bricks house, but, you know, still enjoy the RV life and, you know, just hearing all those reasons and, and uh, you know, again, just the, the stories. I mean, I love telling the stories of, of these people we meet um, and I hope that you know, the people who listen to them um, are inspired by them, you know, in some way, some fa some, uh, you know, some shape. So that's, uh, that's what I love is just the, the people. Um, and I, you know, it's, it's hard to fathom, um, you know, that this is the 99th podcast of this series and, and all those stories that I've been able to help tell is, uh, I don't want to say overwhelming, but it's just... Time went fast. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to believe we're already, you know, at episode 99, heading into episode 100. Um, and uh, like I said, hopefully, you know, these 99 stories have, have touched somebody in some way. So, but anyway, so that's really all I wanted this episode to be about, was us talking a little bit about our... Uh, you know, our travels so far and our experiences um, and it's been uh, you know it's been a lot of fun and the third book is on its way Uke's book is in the works um, so those have been fun projects um, been enjoying this whole journey yeah you Uke probably loves it even more than than us I mean you know Taking him out for the walk, I mean, walks, uh, you know, here, doing the, the dog park with him. And he's not always a, I don't know about a fan of dog parks, but, like, Sniffed he's starting, he's yeah. better. Um, when we were in Dillard, he kind of went off a little bit. We played ball with him a little bit. It's like the first couple dog parks, yeah. he wouldn't leave our side, you know. <laughs> it's yeah, like, well, hey, buddy, up. you're off the leash. You can kind of roam yeah. a little bit, he just and he would just stay there. Make sure we don't go anywhere without him. Yeah. He doesn't want to be excluded. And seeing how he kind of adapted to those tubes at this dog park was kind of funny. Um, had to be lured in at first with a treat, but then a couple times just went in and out on his own. It's funny. He knows. He knows exactly when. He watches your movement and what you're putting on and how you're doing it. And then he knows he's all excited for his walk. Yeah. Yeah, and he even knows, like, on moving day. Yes, he does. Know, he started watching He sees me you doing your thing and me doing my thing, and he, he knows. He's like, oh, we're going to a new spot. We're going to a new spot. New smells. So it's, uh, it's awesome. So, all right, honey. Well, like I said, I wasn't going to ask you the final question because you've answered it many times, and that wasn't necessarily what this particular episode was about. But um, like I said, I hope anybody out there listening if you're thinking about traveling if you're thinking about doing what we're doing i highly recommend it um it can be scary at first um you learn from each other yeah you, know, you learn from many many things we learn yeah and you learn from your other mistakes people. um Just you learn from those around you i mean the the one of the things that's come up a couple times in my last couple podcasts is just the rv community mm -hmm. as a whole they're more neighbors than your neighbor back in your 
sticks and bricks house. <laughs> yeah, by, by far. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, they're just. And we all say that. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, it's incredible great. people. The family, I mean, yeah. When, when we did the podcast with Brittany and Cody, I mean, she brought that up about the RV community. And um, said, it, again, if you haven't experienced it, it's tough to, to really comprehend it. But it is a very, very special community that we are now part of. Um, and we love it. We, we love everyone we met. Um, it's, it's been awesome. And I, have, I have no regrets at all about what we're, what we're doing and what we decided to do. So, but uh, anything else you want to add, honey, before we sign off here? On episode 99. Happy trails. <laughs> all right. So, folks, be sure to check out my blogs and other podcasts at danclauser.com. And uh, head on over to Amazon and pick up a copy of the Beauty of a Diamond through the eyes of the coach and the journey of my mother's son, volume one.